Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss a systematic approach for interpretation of ECG. When you first look at, you, at ECG, uh, you can make an immediate diagnosis, however, even experienced users can make mistakes because uh, during this uh, pattern recognition, uh, during this pattern recognition, you can miss some important things. So that it is of crucial importance to develop a systematic approach uh, during the ECG interpretation. The systematic approach consists of seven uh, steps. During the first step, you should calculate the rate. Second step is, uh, includes rhythm analysis. Third step, axis analysis. Then you should calculate all intervals. Then you should analyze P wave. Then there will be QRS complex analysis. At the end, you should analyze ST segment and T wave abnormalities. And at that, as a step volume, we can make a general conclusion. First of all, uh, we need to calculate heart rate. And in order to do it, we must recognize if we have regular or irregular rhythm. Yes, uh, in order to do this, uh, we must know that irregular rhythm is considered if variation in RR interval is more than 0 0.16 seconds. Okay, so that it means that the difference between the longest RR interval and shortest RR interval will be more than uh, four small boxes if your ECG speed is 25 millimeter per second okay let's have a look at this ECG in this case you can see that the difference between RR interval is not so huge okay so that we can consider this ECG as regular rhythm. next step you should calculate you should uh, uh, how uh, how many boxes are between the R R complexes? Okay. In this case, uh, we are analyzing the second lead, and this is QRS complex. This is QRS complex, and we have one, two, three, four, four large boxes, and one, two, three and four small boxes okay it means that you have 4.8 large boxes because one large box consists of five small boxes then we must divide 300 by the number of large boxes between our, our waves okay in this case we must divide 300 uh, by 4.8 and we can estimate heart rate in this case is about 30 63 sorry okay in case of a uh, ECG speed of 50 millimeter per second you must divide 600 by the number of large boxes there are many other uh, methods for calculating heart rate but I prefer this one next one uh, what will be if we have irregular heart rate okay this ECG represents typical uh, atrial fibrillation uh, rhythm yes in this case we can uh, detect that's a difference between the smallest RR, okay, I think this is the smallest RR, and different and the longest RR is much more than 0 0.16 seconds, okay? This one consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 5, and this one only 2, uh, 
two large boxes so, so uh, hence the difference between these two rr interval uh, is about three large boxes okay it's much higher than uh, four small boxes okay so that we are now having irregular rhythm how can we calculate heart rate in this case okay let's analyze the second lead in this case it is the longest ecg strip okay this is the second lead let's find all our, our uh, intervals this one is quartz complexes then we should uh, calculate the average rr interval in the ecg strip in this case i have calculated and i have obtained an average rr interval as of 2.84 okay let's divide 300 over the average rr interval and we can calculate heart rate in this case it's 105 beats per minute during the next step you should analyze rhythm and rhythm analysis is a very complicated and challenging task uh, therefore i will discuss this uh, this issue in the next video lecture now you must know the characteristic of sinus rhythm Sinus rhythm, uh, in sinus rhythm, we have heart rate of between 60 and 100 beat per minute, okay? Always, P wave will be always positive in one, as in the first, second, AV8 and V3 and V6 leads. And it will be always negative in the RVR, okay? And the number of P wave should be equal to the number of QRS complex and every P wave should be followed by QRS complex in a 1 to 1 ratio and uh, it must be a regular rhythm okay variation in RR interval should be less than 0.16 seconds Okay, our ECG, our example ECG is a, have a sinus rhythm, okay? We can detect all characteristics of the sinus rhythm. The heart rate is about uh, 75 to 80. P wave is positive in the first, second, ABF. It is negative in the RVR. It is positive in the 3 v v6 okay we have the, the similar number of the p and quartz complexes and every p wave is followed by the quartz complex okay this is a p this is quartz p quartz p quartz t p quartz t p quartz t and so on so on so on and the rhythm is regular the variation between the RR interval is not so huge. Next step is a determination of axis. In order to determine axis of the ECG strip, you should pay attention on the uh, direction of QRS complex in the first and the APF leads. If QIS complex is predominantly positive in the first and the VF leads, it means that you have normal axis. Okay, predominantly positive means that the ratio between R and S waves is more than one. Okay, the height amplitude of R wave should be more than amplitude of the S wave. In this case, we can define this quartz complex as predominantly positive. Okay, next one. If you have predominantly positive quartz complex in the first lead, but negative quartz complex in the AVF, negative means that 
uh, the ratio between R to S waves is less than 1. In this case, we have leftward deviation of axis. In, yes, in case of rightward deviation of in axis, uh, we have negative quiets in first lead and positive in quiets in the AVF lead. Sorry. If you have negative quiets complex in both first and quiets in AVF leads, it means that you uh, ECG have extreme axis. In our case, please let's pay attention on the first lead. In the first lead, quiets is predominantly positive. Okay, let's pay attention on the AVF. In the AVF, it is also predominantly positive. Hence, we are having a uh, normal axis. This is a uh, demonstration of left forward axis. Pay attention on the first lead. In the first lead, quiet complex is predominantly positive. And pay attention on the AVF. In this case, uh, R wave is very small and uh, there is a deep S wave. Quiet complex is predominantly negative and in this case ECG has leftward axis. The next step is a calculation of all intervals. Usually we uh, calculate all intervals in the second lead. Okay, please I would I have zoomed it and please first of all it is the beginning of the P wave. It is the beginning of the QIS complex and the interval between them it is PR interval. In this case, uh, PR interval includes four small boxes and as we have a CG speed of uh, 25 millimeter per seconds, we should multiply it to the 40 milliseconds and the PR interval in our case is 0 0.60 seconds. It's normal because PR interval should be uh, between 0 0.12 and 0 0.20. Next, let's calculate quiet complex interval. Yes, in this case, quiet complex uh, includes 2.5 small boxes and it will be 0 0.10 seconds. It is a normal case. Then let's calculate QT interval. In this case, it consists. It includes 11 small boxes, and uh, QT interval is uh, 440 milliseconds. Next step is a analysis of P wave. During the P wave analysis. We should pay attention on the duration, amplitude, and morphology of the P wave. Okay, uh, normally P wave uh, electroactivity of P wave is contributed by both right and left atrium. If you detect very tall P waves, it can be a sign of the right. Uh, atrium hypertrophy. If you detect double notched uh, P wave, it can be a sign of left atrium hypertrophy. Let's discuss, let's analyze P wave in our case. Okay, this is a P wave, and we are, uh, we are calculating the interval duration of the P wave, and we are calculating, estimating the amplitude of P wave. In our case, uh, interval includes three small boxes and the duration is 0 0.12 seconds, which is a normal value. Normally, it should be less than uh, 0 0.12 seconds. And amplitude is 2 millimeter. Yes, normally, it should be less than 2.5 millimeter. And also you should pay attention to the morphology 
as we mentioned before P rate should be positive with the first, second, IVF, and V3 and V6 uh, <coughs> pre uh, precordial leads. During the recent studies, the authors uh, found that electrical patterns that can be found on ECG correlates with uh, mass and shapes of uh, atrium found during the uh, cardiac MRI investigations. QIS complex. Yes, during the analysis of QIS complex, we should pay attention on the duration, amplitude, morphology of the QIS complex, and we should detect if there is any pathological curves or not. Okay. In this, uh, during the analysis of QIS complex, we can detect typical patterns of left ventricle hypertrophy, right ventricle hypertrophy. Okay, please, in this slide, we can uh, see typical patterns of the left ventricle hypertrophy, deep S waves in V1, right precordial list, and uh, large amplitude of core R waves in the V5 and V6 with negative T waves and uh, you can see leftward deviation of the axis. We can also detect typical patterns of right or left bundle branch, uh, bundle branch block and uh, uh, in case of uh, RBBB uh, we can uh, found typical small r large s and large r with apostrophe pattern in the v1 okay the qis complex will looks like a letter m in the v1 and we can detect deep s waves in the v6 in case of left bundle branch block we can detect the opposite situation M like pattern can be found in the V6 and uh, we can find uh, our deep S pattern in the V1 and right precordial leads. Also, typical W Wolf Parkinson White syndrome can be found during the QIS complex analysis. Okay, in this case, we can detect. Uh, additional deflections in the upstroke of the QIS complex with shortening of the PR interval. Let's come back to our case, to our example. Okay, in our case, QIS complex duration is normal. It's, it is less than 0 0.10 seconds. Okay we can see that there is no pattern like left ventricle hypertrophy or any bundle branch broke we can also detect there is a r wave progression in the precordial leads it means that uh, the height of the r waves will be the smallest in the v1 and then it will be increased increased and will uh, uh, reach its uh, maximum point at the v4 Next uh, things that we should pay attention during the interpretation is ST segment. As the most important thing, we should determine if ST segment is on the isolane or not. Okay, as we know, isolane it is a uh, we consider T P uh, interval as isolane. In this case, T is this. Uh, this one is T wave. This one is P wave. This is a TP interval. This is another TP interval, and the connection between them is considered as isolated. In our case, uh, ST segment is on the iso line. Okay, we should pay attention on the J point. J point it is a connection between the QIS and ST segment, and the first 80 milliseconds of the ST segment. We should uh, record, uh, we should detect if 
this segment is on either line or not okay this uh, a demonstration of j point with first 80 milliseconds in this case the speed of ecg is 50 milliseconds so that 80 milliseconds of st segment includes four small boxes we can detect uh, horizontal st depression in which uh, in which we uh, can observe depression of both j point and st segment uh, lower than tp segment we can detect also down sloping st depression in this case uh, st segment will be lower than j point okay we can detect tomb like st elevation in case of acute myocardial infarction uh, we can also detect st elevation typical for brugada syndrome or we can also detect uh, fish hook like st elevation in this case j point is elevated and st uh, segment is also elevated with concave uh, con concave shape yes next step is uh, analyzing of the t waves and, uh, and you know that normally t wave should be asymmetrical with slow upstroke rapid downstroke and the axis should be concordant with the QIS complex. During the acute myocardial infarction, we can detect the winter T waves uh, with upsloping ST, de ST depression and acute peaked T waves. We can also detect biphasic T waves. In this case, it is a negative positive. We can also detect uh, negative T waves or other abnormalities of the T waves. Okay, in at the end we must uh, make a conclusion. In our case, uh, our ECG a typical demonstration of sinus rhythm with a heart rate of 62 beats per minute and normal axis. Okay. Uh, during the interpretation, you must make a final diagnosis. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, I am looking forward for your comments. You can ask any questions and uh, please provide your comments in for this video.